Hey everybody, welcome back to a new video. I have a very exciting product for you guys today. This is from XSTAR. This is their XSTAR Link. This is a DC conversion for your Starlink Gen 2. Now, what does that mean? Well, anybody that's familiar with Starlink Gen 2 knows that it has to be powered from an AC power source, which means that you have to run an inverter if you're in a portable setup, which leads to extra power usage, draining your batteries even faster. Well, that's where this product comes in. This is a plug and play solution. There are no modifications that you have to make to this setup to run it off a 12 or 24 volt battery. This is really cool. Now here on the table, I have the default setup for Starlink Gen 2, so I can show you guys the differences between the setups. Now the Starlink Gen 2 is self-actuated, meaning it aims automatically at the satellites, and it also has a built-in heater for snow melt. So those are the advantages of Gen 2. This is the Starlink router, and this is the entire setup, and you have to have AC power to turn it on. Now let's go ahead and take a closer look at the XSTAR Link DC converter box. This entire thing is built from metal and it's really high quality. Looking at it from far away, you can see there are mounting screw holes so you can mount this directly to a surface. And looking at this side first, you have a power switch to turn it on and off. And then right here, you have your DC input. This supports 10 to 30 volts input. So you can connect up a 12 or 24 volt battery. And this is an Anderson power pole connection and there are two power adapters that come with this unit. You have a grounding lug right here, and then to power the actual satellite receiver, you have a 48 volt PoE output. I'll show you guys that here in a second. And on the other side of the device, you have a 12 volt output designed to power a 12 volt router, a third party router. And right here, you have a ethernet port, which allows you to connect up one device for internet, or you can connect up a actual router to get Wi-Fi access or multiple ports. Now here on the table, I have the most basic setup for the XSTAR Link DC conversion kit, and you can see it's very simple. Now there are two different power cables that come with the unit. The first one is a ring terminal to Anderson power pole with a built-in fuse. So you can connect this directly to the ring terminals of a 12 or 24 volt battery. The second option is a 12 volt cigarette plug that has Anderson power pole that connects into this. So you can power it off a power station in your vehicle or even a standalone battery like this. So basically you have your satellite receiver dishy cable that goes into this adapter here, which turns it into ethernet and that plugs in here. And to turn the whole thing on, you just flip the power switch and it's good to go. Now for a little bit more money, you can actually pay to get a 12 volt router so you can get Wi-Fi access and also more ports to plug in more devices. Now this is just a basic router. You could also use any 12 volt router because it has this barrel port and you'll be surprised that most routers out there are actually 12 volt routers. So you do have the option to pay a little bit more money and get a Wi-Fi router. Now the main advantage of going with a DC conversion for your Starlink Gen 2 would be to save power. Instead of having to run an inverter all the time and getting those conversion losses, we can run directly off of battery. But how much power does it actually save us? Well, let's jump into some testing. So my first test, I wanna see how much power the default Starlink router and satellite receiver use. So for this test, I have it connected to the Pecron E1500 LFP using the inverter. Now I started the test a few minutes ago at 100% state of charge. You can see it's pulling around 53 watts and we are at 99% state of charge. And in line, I have a watt meter here that'll track all the power that's used by the Starlink setup. Now the one downside to this is that it only uses AC power. So we're gonna have the power loss of the inverter itself and also of the device. So I'm gonna let this run for six to seven hours and we'll see how much power it uses. Okay, so the test has been going for seven hours. Let's take a look at the screen to see where we're at. So the power station is at 54% state of charge and we're still pulling around 50 to 60 watts of power through the inverter. Now, if we look at the inline watt meter, we can see that we pulled a total of 380 watt hours during this seven hour test. Now, if we take the total power usage of 380 watt hours and divide it by the duration of the test, which was seven hours, we get an average power usage of 54 watts. So the Starlink Gen 2 uses around 54 watts on average. Now, we also wanna pay attention to how much the battery capacity dropped during this test. We started at 100% state of charge and we went all the way down to 54% state of charge. So the inverter and the Starlink setup used 46% of the battery capacity. Now here on the table, I have the DC testing setup for the XSTAR Link to see how much power it uses. 
So first we are using the Pecoron E1500 to power this entire setup. The test started about 20 minutes ago, so we're at 99% state of charge, pulling around 50 watts, and we are connected via the XT60 30 amp output. This is a 12 volt output. Now that wire is going through this inline shunt. Now this inline shunt shows us the voltage, amperage, wattage. It also breaks down the watt hours and the amp hours and the time of the test. So it'll be very, very useful for this video and tracking how much power this uses. Now, after that, we have the power going into the XSTAR link. So 12 volts in right here. And then we have 48 volts out to the satellite and 12 volts out to this router. And right here, we also have the ethernet that goes into the router. So this setup is going to run for a bit of time and we'll track how much power it uses. We'll check in at the end of the test. So the DC testing has been going for seven hours and let's take a look at the results. So the power station is at 76% state of charge. You can see we're still pulling around the same amount of power. Let's take a closer look at the shunt. Now, if we look closer at the screen, we can see a total power usage of 317 watt hours. And if we divide that by the duration of the test, which was seven hours, it gives us an average power usage of 45 watts. Now we also want to look at the power station state of charge. We started at 100% state of charge. And during this test, it dropped down to 76% state of charge which was 24% versus 46% while running off the AC inverter. So with both those tests completed, we know that this pulls on average around 54 watts, and this pulls on average around 45 watts with a third-party router. Now that's a difference of nine watts or about 16%. So this is 16% more efficient just in the devices themselves. Now we still have to calculate the background power usage of that inverter because we saw a major difference in the battery capacity due to the background inverter power loss. Now for our test in the video, we use the Pecoron E1500 LFP power station, and this has a 2200 watt inverter and a regulated DC output. Now both of these have background idle power consumption. Now in the past, I have tested this extensively. I figured that the AC inverter uses about 2.3% of the battery capacity per hour as it sits idle, and the DC output uses around 0.13% per hour. So there is quite the difference between idle power usage of the AC inverter and the DC output. Now transferring that over to wattage, well, it's kind of hard to do that because I don't have access to the wires inside the power station, but rough estimates are that the AC inverter uses around 32 watts running consistently as it's enabled, and the DC output uses two to three watts. So we can add those wattages to our existing test numbers to get a full power consumption. So final power consumption numbers for the XSTAR link, it's right around 48 watts with the included third-party router. Now the default Starlink setup is around 86 watts using that particular inverter. Now, of course, there are different size inverters out there. I've heard that people just run this off a very small you know, 200 to 300 watt inverter instead of their full RV inverter. But just keep in mind that you do have to calculate the power loss of the inverter. And if you don't have that running, you can save a bunch of power. Now in my final testing, I wanted to see if you could use the X-Star Link standalone without a router. Now there's a couple advantages to that. First off, you don't have to power the router, meaning you could save around 10 watts of power just by powering this. And also you don't have to uh, broadcast a Wi-Fi access point. So if you wanna be a little bit more stealthy, you can connect your device directly into this. Now it was pretty cool. I connected my laptop right into it. I was able to get internet. And when I did a speed test, I got up to 250 megabits per second. So using a third party device like this does not slow your internet speed down. Now, what about the price for the XSTAR Link? I'm here on their website, let's scroll down. You can see they have mounting option, cables, carry bags, but let's look at the actual DC conversion. So you can buy it individually or you can buy it as a kit. Let's look at the Gen 2 option. There are three different options here. So for $189, you can get the base kit without a router. If you want a basic router that's a Wi-Fi 4 router for $10 more, $199. And if you want the Wi-Fi 6 router, which is the best option, is $215. Now I do have a 10% off discount code that I'll include for you guys, my viewers, down in the video description that will apply to these purchases. Now I'll tell you guys in the past, as I've been searching on YouTube for 12 volt conversions for Starlink, there are clickbait videos out there that are super convoluted and complex. 
they make it seem super easy, but it's not. So it's super nice to have a plug and play 12 or 24 volt conversion for your Starlink. Now I appreciate uh, XSTAR sending this out for this video for testing so you guys can know how it performs. I also appreciate my dad letting me borrow his Starlink. This is not my setup. However, we did test with his app. It seems that the app connects to the satellite receiver itself. You do not have to have the Wi-Fi router um, in place for the app to work. We were able to angle it properly, put it in stow mode. We were able to check out the snow melt feature. So everything still works when you're using the DC conversion. So if you guys had that question, hopefully that answers that for you. Now, if you guys like the video, please smash the thumbs up button. Um, I really appreciate you guys checking out the video and you'll have to let me know what your guys' thoughts are on the DC conversion for this, especially being a plug and play option. I'll recommend a couple other videos that you guys can check out. If it's the first time you guys have checked out my channel, make sure you check out some of my other content. You may enjoy it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you guys in the next one.